Dublin in 1916 was the second city of the British Empire. War raged in Europe, and many Irishmen signed up to fight, some hoping their loyalty would be rewarded with Ireland being granted home rule. But others saw opportunity in the carnage. The Irish volunteers a private army sworn to defend the dream of home rule drilled openly on the streets. Within its ranks, some radicals were preparing for rebellion against the British, but secretly, they were being watched. Two informers had infiltrated the ranks of the Irish volunteers. The spies were codenamed Granite and Chalk. Their top secret dispatches still survive today. Hidden in an archive in London for decades, they show us that the British were warned well ahead of the Easter Rebellion that was to change Irish history forever. The detective running Granite and Chalk was called Owen Bryan, a man from County Meath in his mid-50s. Bryan was a talented spy master, and his intelligence reports were read at the highest levels of the British government. He was a superintendent in the Dublin Metropolitan Police G Division, which tracked political crime. The so-called G-men were known in Dublin for their open surveillance of suspected political radicals. Brian met with his informers in discreet places, hotels, boarding houses, pubs. Once he got information from Granite and Chalk, he would type it up and send it to Matthew Nathan, the top civil servant in Dublin Castle and a leading figure of the British administration. In March of 1916, Nathan began to receive worrying reports. Chalk reports that the young men of the Irish volunteers are very anxious to start business at once. It is stated that the Sinn Féiners have enough ammunition to keep them going for six months, and the amount of 303 cartridges is estimated at 300,000 rounds. Names were mentioned that would become famous in Irish history. The O'Rahilly, Thomas McDonough, Eamon Kant. The future president of Ireland, Eamon de Valera, was reported to be storing rifles in his house. Chalk was close to the volunteers. In March, the agent gave Owen Bryan the following report. On Tuesday 28, T. McDonough and two other Sinn Féiners were seen to enter the restaurant in Henry Street, owned by Mrs. W. Power, and carrying heavy handbags, which they left inside. It is believed that the bags contained ammunition. Both sides knew they were in a burgeoning intelligence war. Thomas McDonough warned the volunteers to use their own underground message service and never to mention volunteer business in the post where it could be intercepted. Chalk warned Dublin Castle to their alarm that they too had an informer in their ranks. On the 24th of March, 1916, Chalk made an emergency intervention, telephoning the Dublin Metropolitan Police with a warning after their men raided the printing office of the Gale, a nationalist newspaper. Matthew Nathan knew trouble was stirring. On March 31st, in response to the warnings from Granite and Chalk, he wrote out a list of the forces available if fighting broke out. Then came the starkest warning of all. On April 24, two days before the outbreak of the Rising, Professor McDonough, on issuing the orders on Wednesday night last, said, We are not going out on Friday, but we are going out on Sunday. Boys, some of us may never come back. But Matthew Nathan still hesitated. 
against the urging of advisers, he stopped short of authorising a crackdown during the Easter weekend. He feared provoking violence and wanted to do nothing that would stop Irish men signing up to fight for the British in the trenches of Belgium and France. Finally, on Easter Monday, Nathan decided to act. He was in his office in Dublin Castle on Monday morning, arranging for telegraph communications to be shut to the public so that a roundup of the rebels could begin. At that moment, bullets slammed into the side of Dublin Castle. The rising was a day late, but it had arrived. The rebellion lasted six days. Rebels seized buildings around Dublin and declared a republic. The British army brought a gunship up the River Liffey and bombarded the centre of Dublin to drive the rebels out. Hundreds of people were killed. Surrounded with Dublin burning and civilians lying dead on the streets, the rebels surrendered. Thousands of people were arrested after the rebellion, far more than had actually taken part. On the 3rd of May, the executions began. They were spread out over nine days. As the shots rang out from Kilmainham Jail, the public mood swung in support of the rebels. Momentum for independence grew. Within six years of the Easter Rising, British authorities had handed over Dublin Castle to an Irish provisional government. The rebellion was an embarrassment for the British administration. Matthew Nathan resigned and moved to protect Granite and Chalk. He took their dispatches from his safe in Dublin Castle to London. His private notes acknowledged their important role in passing information. But when he gave public evidence on why the rebellion had happened, all references to the toxic word informer were gone. Owen Bryan was drawn deeper into an intelligence war as the nationalist cause grew stronger after the rebellion of 1916. Some of his colleagues at the DMP were assassinated by the Irish Republican Army. Bryan too was targeted but escaped assassination. By 1920, his very survival made him suspicious to Dublin Castle. He was forced into an early retirement and died four years later. He took the real identities of Granite and Chalk with him to the grave. Granite and Chalk may have been disillusioned volunteers who opposed the idea of a rebellion, or perhaps double agents sent to feed false information to the British. They could have been active volunteers perhaps even awarded medals later by the Irish government for their role in the rebellion. Or perhaps they were figures in the background, a clerk, a secretary, a friend, a spouse, a lover. While Granite is referred to in the dispatches as he, the gender of chalk is never given. Chalk may have been a woman. In 1916 became legendary 
different to all the failed rebellions of the past that had been infiltrated by informers. They thought this time the ranks had held, but the rebels of 1916 never knew how close they came to their rising being snuffed out before it began. If the British had acted on the reports of Granite and Chalk, Ireland may have lived a very different history. <laughs> 